November 5th, 1983. Bye for dolphins. During decompression explosion at a depth of 100 meters, five men died, and one was seriously injured. This disaster is called one of the worst accidents in human history. Welcome to the interesting documentary YouTube channel, where today we present the video topic of your choice. If you want to propose your video idea, you can do it in the comments section. Bye for Dolphins was semi-submerged. Column stabilized drilling rig. More than 100 people were working at the QRM at one time. It could drill underwater and penetrate even to a depth of 460 meters deep. 1983. The Bifurt Dolphin was towed off the coast of Norway. They was interested in natural gas deposits. Once this platform was in its intended location, preparatory work began. Offshore oil and gas operations require the installation and maintenance of equipment at great depths, and the people doing this work face real danger. Where even the slightest mistake can cost lives. The work of these people is one of the most dangerous, but at the same time, it is the best paid in the whole world. They can earn from 30 to 45,000 euros per month. They spend a whole month in the ocean deep which can be as deep as 300 meters. They have to breathe a mixture of trimix gases, made up of oxygen, a mixture of helium and nitrogen. These people have to live in these rooms all the time. Because simply, otherwise they would spend more time rising to the surface, and trying to equalize the amount of nitrogen in the body, than working. People to rise from a depth of 200 meters, and avoid decompression sickness have to gradually rise to the surface of the water for eight whole days. For a person being in the depths of the ocean for a long time, the body is under high pressure. And this forces nitrogen to be absorbed into the tissues of the body. And when it suddenly emerges, it is injected directly into the blood and expands. Then you are in danger of dying from blockage of blood vessels in the brain. November 5th, 1983, about four o'clock in the morning, British divers, 35-year-old Edwin Coward, and 38-year-old Roy Lucas, was resting in his cell. At that time, the Norwegian team of 29-year-old Bjorn Bergensen and Charles Helvik, who were 34 years old, finishing their shift. They reached the transfer capsule. This capsule was watched from the outside by diving assistants. 32-year-old William Cramond and Martin Saunders, they docked the diving chamber. So Bergensen and Helovic only had to go through the short tunnel and join Coward and Lucas. The usual procedure is as follows. The diving bell door must be closed. Then slightly increase the pressure of the diving bell to seal the bell door tightly. Close the door of the first cell. Slowly reduce the pressure in the tunnel until it reaches one atmospheric pressure. Open the clip to separate the diving bell from the camera system. The first two steps were done correctly, but for some unknown reason before Helovic closed the chamber hatch, Kramen released the clamp, securing the capsule to the tunnel. This resulted in an explosive decompression of the leaky chamber system. It was forced out of the chamber system with great force, which tore off the insides of the tunnel, the door and the diving bell. The consequences were terrible. The capsule decompressed instantly. Inside, the pressure dropped from 9 atmospheres to 1. This killed Kramond instantly, and seriously injured Saunders. Helovic in the tunnel literally exploded due to such a sudden decompression of pressure. And his body parts were scattered all over the platform deck. Three other divers also died. At Cowards, Lucas and Berengsen's autopsies revealed lumps of white fat clogging their arteries and veins. They suddenly had boils in their blood. All five divers are believed to have died instantly and painlessly. A subsequent investigation concluded that the accident was caused by human error. Since William Cramond was killed in the incident, it is not known why he released the clamp before closing the hatch. Investigators speculated that a combination of fatigue and deck noise may have caused a fatal miscommunication. But another important factor was the rich diving system itself. 
which, despite the recommendations of the Norwegian Oil and Gas Regulatory Authority, no interlocks were installed. Pressure gauges or other safety devices, preventing the dive chamber from being disconnected under pressure. This equipment failure was not mentioned in the official accident report. As a result, the families of the dead divers did not receive any financial compensation. Believing that the investigation was being covered up, the families of the victims formed the North Sea Divers Alliance, which eventually succeeded in suing the Norwegian government and reached a settlement 25 years after the accident. This incident is a good reminder of the dangers that lurk, which always arise when living and working in an extreme environment.